Detroit has this, this spark about it. I love Detroit. I think um, a lot of it um, comes from the people. All of the downsides or the downturns of what the city has been, um, there is great hope. I grew up in Detroit and um, I got my spark from science when I realized that it had an impact on people. When I realized it really was um, something that could be used as a, a catalyst for change. I was always interested in environmental issues as a high schooler. I mean, I was like, you know, what is all this blight, all the vacant lots, all of the vacant housing, vacant schools, vacant community centers. Um, and this leads to um, crime, you know, even health concerns. I partnered with Daniel Katz here at the University of Michigan, and we ended up starting a project together on pollen um, and public health in Detroit. Ragweed is an allergenic plant, and it grows on um, railroad tracks, any type of edging around a, a lot, pretty much anywhere where there's sunlight, good soil, and good water. It is a huge factor to public health that contributes to the rise of hospitalization rates and the rise of allergies. The research project was answering the question, is ragweed more abundant in vacant lots compared to your suburbia? There's this term called citizen science, combining people to science and the solutions. So that was the approach that I took, and I collaborated with Western International High School to be a part of the data collection process. So what can we do to change the land use um, to actually decrease the amount of ragweed. The most integral part was really um, having them go out and actually collect data. So we made these homemade pollen collectors um, and we actually had the students take each individual pollen collector and place them in different parts of their communities. It also got us a lot of data points for us to assess back in the lab. So we found that most ragweed plants are found in vacant lots compared to suburbia or in other wealthy neighborhoods. Vacant lots had the most ragweed production. Usually students end up with a textbook, classroom, and end up going home. But if you can actually make science real to them, that's really what I believe is the catapult to change. so much green space. Detroit is unique in that way. It's not like a Chicago or a New York. I believe Detroit needs a paradigm shift. When we think of urban planning, we think more of the traditional way of growing or even developing. So the solution is not just concrete and buildings. I believe the paradigm shift is to see natural space in a different way. Let them grow out. Let them become forest. Let them go back to its original state. So you have all these different other species that get taller or more robust, and it outcompetes the resources that a ragweed's able to get. I think viable green space in an urban area is one of the most crucial things that we can do for not a lot of money. Putting her work in the context of the city of Detroit, bringing it to Detroit Public School students, makes it all relevant. This project in science is my voice and what I really view as a way of making impactful and immediate change. Once facts get out there, that's when advocacy and that's when real change happens on all different levels, from young to old, from um, black to white, from everyone in the city.